The following review was intended for entertainment purposes and targeted for adult fans of the series. So don't be naughty. Ho ho ho! Hello there, heroes. I'm the Ornament Ranger, and welcome to another Power Rangers toy review. But at this point, you were expecting this one. I kind of spoiled it when I mentioned how I was working through my Lightning Collection backlog, uh, that these would be the other two that you would be seeing, and thus, here they are. This is yet another example of me getting something brand new and reviewing it alongside something that is quite old in terms of the Lightning Collection. We have the In Space Yellow Ranger, a rare, rare, rare female figure in the Lightning Collection line. And we also have the Lost Galaxy Magna Defender, which was one of the very first, I don't believe it was in Wave 1, but within the first couple of waves, I want to say, of the Lightning Collection. And the main way you can tell the age of this figure is that you can see Saban's on the logo of the box there, where it is not over here, because this one is newer. Remember, the first couple of waves of the Lightning Collection have Saban's name on the Power Rangers logo before Hasbro finally took that off. So we're going to take a look at both of these, of course. We look at the box art together because that is pretty basic. The front is looking good on both those beautiful Lightning Collection drawings. We go this way and see the full box art like that. Very, very nice. We come to the back here looking at poses and seeing the horn wrap around from Magna Defender's helmet. But both of these look rather easy to match. So we'll see about that. And we come around and you get that wraparound art and you see Power Rangers in space and Power Rangers Lost Galaxy dmc -aid. And then we wrap back around to the front where we see accessories in the box such as like so and like thus. All right, let's start with the newer figure, but the older season, taking a look at Ashley. Two figures, neither of which terribly involved the color yellow, one kind of did, but both had yellow or gold on their backing cards. We get to the yellow in Space Ranger, and her backing card is silver and black. Ashley's extra hands are a very tiny closed fist and a choppy hand. The in-space suits aren't the most detailed suits in the franchise, but almost everything that I would have wanted, they got. There's a nice shiny gold on the envelope logo, as they call it there. Uh, you see the colored squares on the chest. The helmet looks very, very nice. You know, nothing really stands out widely as being missed. My one little complaint is on the helmet, and it's not even really a complaint like I had with Zeo Gold. It's just a little detail that I really wish they could have worked in. Um, and funny enough, the reason it sticks out in my mind so much is just having done Database Rangers Charity Livestream, where we watched through all of Power Rangers in Space, and I realized that they used those symbols they had inside of the top of their helmets, those little holograms with like computers, cell phone, camera, etc., etc. They used them a lot more than I remembered them doing, especially Ashley, who had the camera symbol and was able to use that to search buildings and look for things and etc., etc. As you can see, that's just basically solid black. I think my brain is trying to get it to look translucent like there's something inside but I really wish they had just you know kind of made that translucent and had a little hologram effect in there or something it would have been nice but that's not a huge takeaway especially since you didn't still see it all that much to me one of the more creative weapons in the Power Rangers and even Super Sentai franchises this is the Star Slinger it is Ashley's slingshot basically <laughs> uh it looks pretty good 
uh, nicely painted with silver and yellow and black on the handle. It comes with this little slingy do effect part. That snaps on like that to the two ends. You will push it on until you hear a snap for it to snap on, and then it's firing a little energy. The Astro Blaster looks absolutely fantastic. Nice little red paint detail right there. The little gold envelope logo, the silver, the very nice blue. That's an excellent little piece. When talking about Ashley's human head here, I'm going to say something that is going to sound a little bit insensitive. Um, but I do think it's true, and it, to me it is just the most accurate way to talk about it, and it may be what they ended up doing. I can't say this 100% for sure. Simply looking at the face here, I think this looks much more like Tracy Lynn Cruz today as opposed to when she was Ashley. And you read into that whatever you think that means. So, Astronema thought she could switch places with me and impersonate me, huh? Well, I've got a Star Slinger Blast right here with her name on it. This is a pretty good figure. I will say uh, my main concern anytime we get a female figure, my mind always goes racing back to the Jungle Fury yellow and RPM yellow figures that I think were literally put together with toothpicks. Um, this is a good figure that I think is representative of Ashley's general body shape and size. It's realistic. Uh, the skirt is nice, but it's split. It allows for posability with the figure. Uh, the accessories are nice. I will say it is kind of interesting that that Star Slinger blast is kind of arcing down. But whatever, the Astro Blaster looks absolutely fantastic. Again, I wish they had done a little translucent black piece on the top of the helmet and put in a little holographic decal with that camera symbol because I think that would be a really nice touch for the figure. I will say also, this is a thought I had as I was getting ready to pose this figure for this shot, it is encouraging to get Ashley not only because we got Ashley, but because we know that means we will also get Cassie because Hasbro has been very non-subtle about us getting the same figures in a line. So we will get a pink in space figure that is this figure repainted with different accessories, a different head and a different helmet. So there you go. And it'll be good to have another female figure in the line because at this point, and I'm going to try to find a link to this chart that I saw and put it down in the uh, info of the video. Uh, female characters in this line are vastly, vastly underrepresented. And I understand that that's toy sales. That is a toy company that is afraid the female figures won't sell as well. That is a toy company that maybe has some experience with some female figures shelf warming. But... Being a Power Rangers fan and just talking about what I want, you know, I value the gender diversity in the franchise and I want to see that represented in this line that honors the entire franchise history. So, like, uh, one of my, and I know I'm not alone in this, but one of my biggest gripes with the Lightning Collection right now is I'm glancing over at my Beast Morphers figures. We have Ravi, we have Blaze, we have Devin, we have Nate, and we do not have Zoe or Roxy. We also don't have Steel, although funny enough, he's a robot and also not technically speaking a human male. So, you know, we gotten the four human males in that line, but neither of the girls and not the robot. So just, you know, that's frustrating. And like, you know, the main females in this line you think of are the Trini figure, are the Ranger Slayer figure, the Kimberly figure, you know. <sighs> Ashley was refreshing in being a female figure that was not from Mighty Morphin. So, you know, there are those plans to push forward with that. And I do believe that Hasbro is dedicated to representing those characters in figures. Just, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I do want to see 
some uh, forward progress on that, if you will. Okay, I'm going to stop ranting about stuff and start talking about Magna Defender. Here he is. Look at it. It's the Magna Defender. Look at, look at, look at how good his suit looks because this is a good looking figure. I love that shiny green on the chest there. I love the gold and black detailing. I love that the shoulder armor moves so these arms have full range of motion. I love the armor texturing on the armor pieces that ever so slightly distinguishes it from the few non-armor pieces. Makes them look more like spandex and then you have armor that looks very, very nice there. I will say this belt is a little bit weird. I thought uh, at first it was just a piece in the box meant to hold it in, especially since he's got this cape here. But no, looking at the back of the box, it is intended to be there. I'm not sure how much it matches the suit. It probably does, but it's meant to hold the sword. A little peg on the hole there and it sits there just like that. We'll set that aside. The helmet looks very nice with the silver and the gold and the shimmery green crystal there and the visor. The cape confused me for a second because it pegs out at the shoulders, so I thought it came off. But then I came to the back here and tug on that pretty good and it's stuck in there. So I can't honestly be sure if the cape is supposed to come off and mine got stuck for some reason or the cape isn't supposed to come off and mine is loose at the shoulders. But either way, there you go. Magna Defender has one of those gun swords that it's a gun and it changes into a sword. Some people aren't fond of that because they want a sword that is a gun, not one that changes forms like that. They both look pretty good. I believe that there should be some silver paint on this somewhere, but the green and the gold is very nice. For some reason, the gun has a long gold line on it that the sword does not. Also, my gun seems to be bent slightly. That's unfortunate. There's a little painted gold piece here on the sword. They're neat, but I can only display one of them because they're the same weapon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to show you this figure with the human head that came with it. Ah! It's the Headless Defender! Run! Wait, why am I running? I am the Headless Defender. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to use my Christian Bale voice. I... <clears throat> I am the Headless Defender. Yeah, Magna doesn't come with Mike's human head, which is an interesting decision. Um, we weren't really sure if that was for another release later down the line. Hasbro has started getting into doing re-releases, so maybe they figure they can do a re-release of this figure later on, maybe dropping one of the gun swords and giving us Mike's human head. Um, they said at the time, I remember because a lot of people asked them about it, and they said they wanted to properly represent the character kind of in chronological order. So they were saying, this is the Magna Defender. This is the character who had the grudge against Scorpius because Scorpius killed his son, Zika, and etc., etc. So they didn't want... Like, a lot of us felt like it would, you know, it would be perfectly possible if you included Mike's head to have either character represented just based on whether or not they had that human head. But no, they apparently were standing firm on the fact that this is just Magna Defender before Mike takes over the powers. So no human head. However, what if fate had turned a little twisty turny macaroni and it was Leo that fell into the crevasse and received the powers of the Magna Defender? So yeah, I can swap Leo's head on here if you want some kind of a human head on the Magna Defender. There might be other characters that look closer to what Mike looks like. I really do feel like, especially with Hasbro's, you know, re-release happy ways, that we are going to get a Magna Defender that will come with Mike's head. Unfortunately, I'm not going to pick it up because I already have this one and I'm not really in the market to rebuy figures. Uh, you might notice that I didn't get the Goldar that was released widely because I already picked up the one from GameStop and I don't buy figures twice. <laughs> so I'm not going to pick up another Magnet Defender just to get Mike's head. What I would love Hasbro to do 
And, like, it could even be something that they restricted just to Hasbro Pulse Premium, to the paid service. I wouldn't even mind because I understand the niche of this. But do stuff, like, where, where even, even kind of on demand, but maybe or just in small supply, you make little additional pieces for these figures that people can buy if they want to. Like Mike's human head. If you want that for your figure, you know considering the niche value of it and everything, you could probably get a lot more than it's worth. Um, my mind at first said, like, I'd pay $5 for Mike's human head. That's probably a little much. I, I kind of backtrack on that, but $3 plus shipping? Sure. You know, I'd probably do that because that would, that would be an enhancement piece to this figure. Um, and I understand not everybody wants it or needs it, but it's something I'd love to have. So that's a free idea for you, Hasbro, although I'd be terribly surprised if nobody at your company has thought of that already. And onward. Hey, Ashley, would you like to see my giant shotgun? Whoa, buddy, you need to remember that this is a kid's show. What? I'm talking about this right here. Look, see how it fires in that effect part that Sean forgot to mention? Oh, right. Neat. Yeah, I uh, kind of forgot because it fell out of the box when I was taking everything out. But there's a little, honestly, kind of drippy shot effect part there that looks pretty neat. Almost kind of matches the color scheme. It's really more blue. Really should be more green. But I'm giving it all the credit that I can. Uh, it feels like my lightning collection reviews are becoming more and more nitpicky as I go on, and that's not exactly my intention. It's just kind of the way it goes. Uh, again, I think those are both quality figures. Uh, I praise them both kind of for separate reasons. Magna Defender is kind of a niche character that you wouldn't necessarily think would get a lightning collection figure. Uh, so I am happy to see that. And Ashley, of course, as I mentioned, a female figure in this line is something that is always worth celebrating. And hopefully her figure sells very well and pushes Hasbro to put out more female ranger figures, more female villains, just more female figures in this line is always a good thing. These are both quality figures and I recommend you pick them both up and they are excellent and they get my thumbs up. That is going to do it for another Power Rangers toy review, Lightning Collection Double Bill here. Thank you so much as always for watching. Now that the video's done, you can head down below and hit that thumbs up button to let me know that you enjoyed it. And while you're down there, let me know what you think of these figures. Do you like them? Do you have them? Do you not plan to get them? Do you plan to get them now that you've seen my review of them? Both of these figures, I believe, are pretty widely available. Magna Defender is probably the type of thing you're going to find a GameStop, maybe at some of the major retailers. Again, neither of these, I believe, are retail exclusive. Actually, I know both of them weren't because of the color of their boxes. So there you go there. Uh, they should both be widely available at retail. Ashley is probably going to be a little bit easier to find because her figure is a lot newer. Uh, but let me know if you're planning on getting these and what you thought of my review down in the comments below. Please make sure you're subscribed to my channel to see all of my videos. Ring the bell, get your notifications set up so you're notified whenever I post brand new videos such as these Power Rangers toy reviews. And if you'd like to support my channel in any way financially to help me get even more of these lovely Lightning Collection figures, you can check me out on Patreon or Coffee at Orange Ranger Videos, or check out my merchandise store, Orange Ranger Videos, on Teespring. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, may the power protect you.